Okay, so we're going to introduce the toolbox to you today. This is kind of like rough structure of what we're going to be covering. We're not going to go into too much detail. We're going to discover what OpenForm has to offer and what it has in store for students like you, basically. I, uh, it kind of gets on my nerves when people describe OpenForm as a solver, but OpenForm is not a solver. It is a C++ toolbox, a toolbox that has a range of solvers, pre and post processing utilities. So basically, it can do a lot of things based on how you want to manipulate your data. Um, there is a full form to open form. If you Wikipedia it, you'll, the first result would be open field operation and manipulation. That's open form. But, uh, but yeah, as, as we call it, open form. What, we, what open form is, is basically falls into two categories. You have solvers and utilities. Uh, solvers is what I talked about already. They do the actual solving of the physical problem. For example, if you have a multi-phase problem, if you have an aerodynamics problem, they will do the actual physical solution of the PDE. Utilities will do the post and the pre-processing stuff. For example, if you have data that you need to manipulate to feed into the solver, or if you have data that comes out of the solver and you want to do something with it. For example, block mesh. Yeah? Block mesh is, is the tool. For example, if you've used Ansys Fluent before, that, that's where they generate the mesh. In open form, that's called block mesh. And then the snappy hex mesh and so forth. Those are utilities. They perform tasks for the input to the solver. I, I can show you all this in case uh, that I'm going to show you now. This is just basic stuff. What, what an open form case is, is divided into three folders. You have the zero folder that has all the boundary conditions. You have a constant folder that has stuff that is relevant to the physical simulation and system which controls the data for the simulation. Now, how is this different? I can show it to you on my screen. If you can see my screen now, this is a generic WSL, which is a Windows subsystem for Linux. A lot of you people probably use Windows. So this is a big recommendation to you. If you have Windows, you can install something called Windows subsystem for Linux. You can do a quick check, yeah? If your Windows version is 2020, that is your version 2004, you can go ahead and install something called the Windows Terminal, which is what I have right now. Because OpenForm is something that's based on a Unix operating system. That is, it, it requires this, this kind of interface that looks scary to some of you. But this is what you'll need to deal with OpenForm because OpenForm, unlike, let's say, solvers like Star CCM or Ansys Fluent, requires a text editor, something that looks as scary as this, but trust me, it isn't scary. Let's look at it, for instance. So this is, uh, this is for example, a typical open form folder. As I described to you, you can see that it has three folders. It has zero, constant, and system. So for example, if you move into zero, you see all the boundary conditions that you need. For example, this is the boundary condition for you, you being the velocity. For example, here is where you define all your boundary conditions. Inlet would be where your inlet velocity is from. The outlet would be a zero gradient. A no slip condition is basically what you assign to walls, et cetera, et cetera. That's your zero folder. Now, if you move into your constant folder, so it basically has two things in this case, but it can have a lot of things that are relevant to the physical properties of the simulation. For example, transport properties. Transport properties in this case specifies that it has a transport model that is the viscosity model is Newtonian. It is for a Newtonian fluid. And the viscosity mu is specified as uh, one e to the mile minus five. These are the two parameters that are specified. You can specify a turbulence model and turbulence properties. Here you have a car epsilon model that is specified and turbulence has been switched on. So basically these, these deal with the physical properties of the simulation. There's a tiny hidden folder inside called polymesh. This is basically where your mesh is created. Once you issue something called a block mesh command or a snappy hex mesh command, your mesh in terms of points is going to be stored in this folder. So it's pretty neat. It's pretty packed up. Um, and it's divided into the last folder, as I said, is system. System is pretty cool. It deals with this, it deals with the simulation parameters. So it has nothing to do with the physical properties of the solution. It deals with, let's say, how many time steps you want to run it for, what is the current number of the solution, etc. So the main workhorse behind this is the control dict file. For example, here, I'm going to specify that I'm going to start the solution at zero and end it at a time step of 2000. I'm going to run it with something called a simple form, which I'll explain later and then do a lot of other things. For example, here it's runtime modifiable, which means, which means that I can change any of these properties in the course of a solution. Delta T is the time step for my simulation. So I can change that as well in the course of a simulation. So these basically hold the simulation relevant parameters. So it's nicely boxed in. It's nice for people to understand and it makes the solver easy to use. Uh, I'll, I'll head back to my simulation. Uh, to my presentation. So as you saw, the three folders are visible here. Let's go ahead to how do you actually get it on your system? Most of you that have probably Google open form in the past, you've probably been a bit confused because you've seen two versions of these floating on the internet. You do have the open form with a trademark R at the end. This is a trademark of easy open CFD. 
which is basically a commercial thing. It's called openform.com. So basically they develop a fork of open form that is developed and maintained by a company. It's not completely open source, but it is maintained by a company called ESI open CFT. There's another version called open form foundation. This is, if you go into the website, openform.org, you will see that this folder is uh, this, this open form version is basically fully community maintained. Uh, so it's completely open source. Uh, so now to dis so which, wor which version is what that's important as well. ESI open CFD has versions like this, for example, V1806. If you see this, you know that it's completely an ESI open CFD version. 1806 means it was released in June of 2018. Just like now, for example, 2006 has just come out. That was released just a month ago in, the, in June of 20, 2020, just this year. The Open Form Foundation, the one that's completely open source, has a naming convention like version 4.0, version 5.0, etc. The version that was released this year is version 8.0. Both of them were just released. So, so if this is confusing to you, you should know what the differences are because this is kind of important. Which version to choose? A lot of people ask me this. Do I develop, uh, do I, do I download the org version? Do I develop the com version? This is first of all, a matter of taste and preference. If you're used to developing one, just stick to it. But when you're in doubt, these two, these two open forms are, com are in a way completely different. They have their own forks. They have their own release notes and some of them are better for the solver notes. Let's say you want to do something in multi-physics, in multi-phase flow. You read, okay, if is the multi-phase solver more improved? What features does it have for each open form version? And then you decide to download it. There is, for example, for the community driven solver, that is the open form foundation. There is also another fork called form extend. Now form extend has solvers that do not exist in these two ones, at least for now. They have some really cool solvers as well. For example, there's one that I have started using called Solids for Foam. It's basically all the solid mechanics solvers that you would have on something like ANSYS Workbench done on a finite volume mesh in open form, but it's done via Foam Extend. So if you just Google Foam Extend, you can also download this. It's a bit bigger, but but again, it's a matter of taste if you want the certain if you want the solver on your system. I, as I said, I normally do use ESI OpenCFD because that is the version we use at Volkswagen. That's the version I've always used. So, but it's a matter of personal preference, as I said. What, do you, what, what for an operating system do you use? Um, a general tip to you, if you're gonna be use, using and developing CFD on of the environment, I recommend you have a Linux system. It does not, I do not mean that you should have a Linux system installed on a dual boot. Uh, in case you guys don't know, you can have uh, Windows along with an Ubuntu or any other Linux distribution on your system as a dual boot. But I don't necessarily recommend it because there's something called the Windows subsystem for Linux on Windows. It is what I had just shown you. Yeah. For example, you can see my screen. This I'm running a complete Linux distribution, so to say. It is like a virtual machine but I'm running it on my Windows system. So I don't need to have a dual boot system that has an Ubuntu installed in, in that computer as well. I don't need another computer. I can have Linux and Windows working in the same system. Some people say, okay, why don't you have something like a virtual box, virtual machine, but for some computers, uh, it's slow, it really slows down your computer. For example, I have a 16 GB system uh, for my RAM. Some people don't. For lower RAMs, it can really slow down your system. So I recommend getting the WSL. If you have the newest version of Windows, I recommend you get a WSL2, which is the newest update to WSL. Everything is just a lot faster. You can, so when you're gonna install this on Linux, Linux or WSL, as I've shown you before, you're gonna install it from source. That is, you're gonna download the source code and then you're gonna compile the source code. This compilation takes some time, but that is the recommended way that I do it. If you have Windows, as I said, you can use WSL, but there are also other versions. MinGW is a minimal system for Linux on Windows. You can also use that. Then you get another separate binary for OpenForm that you do not need to have WSL for. You can just download it. Docker is something like a container that will contain a Linux environment in it, which you will download and download OpenFORM inside that environment. So these things will work on Windows. But of course, as I said, use WSL if you absolutely have to use um, Linux. In fact, if you want to switch to a complete Linux system, there are also commercial software like Star CCM that work on Linux as well. ANSYS Workbench and Fluent, as far as I know, are not compatible with Linux. Uh, you will have to run them on Windows. But that's the best thing about OpenFORM. It will work on either operating system.
So there are workarounds. You probably have an idea about open form already. Um, there are a multitude of solvers, as I've discussed earlier. There's a solver for everything. Uh, basic solvers are things like Laplace and potential flow. Potential flow just basically solves the potential equations if you've seen them before. Uh, for instance, potential flow is what I would use to initialize my solution before I use something like a simple form or some other incompressible solver. A general solver is then the wide breadth of all solvers that are available either for transient or steady state flow. For steady state flow, you have things like simple form or raw simple form if it's compressible. If it's incompressible, you have pimple form, piezo form, raw pimple form for compressible, etc. There are a range of multi-phase flows as well. Uh, for example, you can have Euler Euler flow that is normally like a two-phase flow, basically. Then you have volume of fluid solvers. You have a range of other multi-phase uh, solvers that you can use as well. Lagrangian is anything that has to do with a Lagrangian flow. A Lagrangian flow basically means that there are particles in the flow. This can be interesting, for example, when there is a spray or, for example, inside a combustion engine when there's going to be spray. Uh, for example, diesel foam is an example of a spray solver. Which, which is uh, important for modeling uh, a lot of different kinds of flows. Heat transfer is also very well done in open form. They're buoyancy driven flows, uh, flows that have basically the, the buoyant pimple form, except buoyant simple form, et cetera. CHT, conjugate heat transfer, and there are a variety of uh, fluid solid interfaces where you want to measure the heat transfer across a lot of different solvers. So you can just basically have your pick. A scalar transport equation is basically uh, what you can see below in the equation. A T is the scalar transport variable that you're going to transport. A transport equation is basically anything that has, let's say, an unsteady term, the, the first time derivative, then a convection term, which is the central term, and then a diffusion term, which is the term on the right. So that is basically a convection diffusion equation for a scalar. Yeah, and the scalar being T. If you see on the right, that is how... Uh, it is discretized in open form. So it's it's really cool. Uh, you can actually read the equation out for yourself. FVM is basically, uh, it, it's basically a, a namespace for uh, the explicit solving of an equation. DDT, as you can see, is the time derivative. Di dive is the divergence. Laplacian is the Laplacian operator that you see in the diffusion term. So it's, it's, it's pretty easy to read. Let's go through the strong points of open form and why I use open form. Uh, open form is covered by a GNU public license. Um, you can contribute to any of the versions that I've described before. Even the ESI open CFD version, you can contribute to it. There is a development fork that's running. For the open form foundation version, of course you can. Uh, so anything that you do, if you submit it, if you have a pull request and there is a review, obviously you can have your solver contributing to an open source problem, which is really cool to me. CFD simulation at no cost. Which is the coolest bit about this? You guys are all students. A lot of you are. Uh, so this helps you break into the CFD problem even before you've left school. So I think this is ideal for learning. Solve a toolbox for a wide breadth of physical problems. As I've described to you before, you can do anything that's open form. It's not just even restricted to fluid flow or even physical problems. There is also a solver in open form for financial problems. If you want to evaluate, let's say, financial markets, there's also a really cool solver that does that. So you can program anything in open form as long as it fits with the, fits with the code style that open form has and it's accepted. Uh, the best advantage that open form has compared to other commercial solvers is if you want to implement new models. Um, there is a very distinct coding style to open form and it's very easy to basically copy solvers and make them your own and change a little bit and then you have a new model or you have a new solver. So it's very easy to create shared libraries. It's very easy to create new solvers which makes the difference. Very active development. Uh, this is the best thing. There are a lot of people just like us working on open form right now. There are a lot of universities, a lot of research groups that then bring out our changes almost every day, uh, which makes it something that you'd want to learn instead of learning a lot of other open source tools as well. For example, open source tools like SU2 and uh, some, some open source tools in the US, I think, which are very, very restricted to public labs, but open form is used the world over. It's an industry leader in some areas as well. For example, I've noticed for a fact that viscoelastic models in open form, the solvers that they use are, are beyond industry standards at this point. Even the biggest research groups, for example, I know a research group at the Technical University of Munich that uses this in their research group and they are world-class. So uh, it, it's, it's really something to contribute to if it's possible. As I mentioned to you before, open form H from the foundation fork 
and uh, ESI OpenCFD version 2006 was recently released just a month ago. Uh, I'm just going to list out some of the new, uh, new cool things that were developed in the last year. For instance, the adjoint method. Uh, as you can see here, the adjoint method, if, you, if you're going to Google this after the webinar, it's a really cool thing. So it, it relies on something called uh, continuous differentiation. It, it basically takes gradients and uses, uh, uses the gradients uh, from the fields that you obtain in order to give you sensitivities, which you can use to optimize the shape of your geometry. For example, for this case, uh, as you can see in the photo, if there's a car, if, if I'm given a certain velocity field, I will, compute, I will compute sensitivities on the entire surface. And then it will give me basically a recommendation as to how I change my geometry. So this is somewhat of an optimization that you can do with CFD, which is really, really cool. I personally have used this for a lot of uh, applications that I've uh, done basically with solar car development. And it is very, very useful, even if as a recommendation. Uh, please Google this after, after the webinar. Some other things that interest me is aeroacoustics development. OpenFoam is really catching up to the other commercial solvers in terms of aeroacoustics. This is a really complicated field. It, it basically involves the sound generated from fluid flow, which is a very difficult phenomenon because the scale of turbulence generated flow and, uh, and the scale of sound from it are very, very different. So to compute the, the varying scales is a very, very difficult problem. But OpenForm has developed a lot of new things in the, in the last few years uh, to compute the aero acoustic, uh, the acoustic pressure in this case uh, for a set of points and to, and to in the end basically get uh, somewhat of a, let's say a straw number generated uh, sound frequency or a decibel value for sound. Uh, so again, really cool stuff coming in from OpenForm in the last year. Um, this is uh, this is something uh, on a bit of a tangent level, but something that I think students should really look into. It's something called the precise library. Um, so this is basically something that also sets OpenForm apart. Precise is a coupling library uh, between different uh, solvers. So for example, if you have OpenForm, and if you have something like I don't know, like Comsol or something like Calculi X, which is basically a solid state solver, a structure solver it can combine the results of open form, feed it to the structure solver and then feed it back through adapters that are developed for each solver. For example, open form will have an adapter, the adapter will read it and give it to Precise. Precise will give it to the adapter for Fenix or Calculi X and then the feedback continues. It is really, really cool. For example, a lot of people who want to work in fluid structure interaction, uh, the flutter of an airfoil for an example, this is a really cool way to couple open form and it's a really cost, a very, very cheap method computationally. There is, uh, for example, at least in my experience, the, there was not so much overhead while using precise. But the cool thing is if you use something called open form extend, there is also uh, an FSI solver that has been developed specially for form extend. So if you guys want to look into such a class of problems, open form has someone, something for everyone basically. So that, that sets it apart as well. And that, that's why I've used it before. Um, uh, now I'm just gonna describe a few power users for open form. Some people worry that it's open source and not a lot of people use it. Um, that's not entirely true because a lot of academia does research with open form. For example, my university at EWTH Aachen, there are a lot of groups that work with open form, a lot of groups at TU Munich, KIT Karlsruhe in Germany, TU Delft, Virginia Tech, for example, people that I know work on OpenForm, a lot of universities in the UK, including Imperial, obviously, where, where OpenForm was developed, Cranfield University, et cetera, a lot of very strong research groups that work on OpenForm. So, of course, if you have, uh, the, uh, for example, if you have plans to do your master's or your PhD at any one of these universities, or if you want to join research groups here, it's always a good idea to show your ability with OpenForm if you're in your application. So it's always helpful. Um, contrary to popular belief, especially in Europe, you see, we're seeing a lot of views with open form, especially with the Volkswagen group with whom I, with whom I work, uh, Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche, Mann, all the basic, uh, Volkswagen sister or daughter groups all use open form in some form or the other. We also use a lot of commercial tools, but there is also a lot of open form used, uh, especially in Germany, uh, where I'm based, there is a lot in the chemical industry that uses OpenFOAM, BASF, Kofistro, Linda, these all use OpenFOAM very heavily for their simulations. 
on a personal level, any any FSA team, any any Formula One team, or any Hyperloop Stream team, if you're going to maintain costs or if you don't have a license for one of the commercial softwares, you're probably going to end up using OpenForm. So if you want to join any of these teams, even at your university or at a university abroad when you go for your master's degree, it's good that you know this. Um, and personally, I usually think that OpenForm is the best stepping stone to any other commercial software. I would not for instance, have a problem learning any other commercial software once I do know OpenForm, especially in development, because that's where the real meat of the solver is. A lot of the entrepreneurs uh, among you, there's also a lot of startups that base the solution on OpenForm. SimScale in Germany has developed an entire solution of cloud-based simulation, but they base, base it on OpenForm. Engis, uh, Conself, these all have OpenForm on their backend, which makes it really cool. Why should you learn it? Uh, we can go into a bit of detail with this. Um, OpenForm allows you to learn theoretical aspects with the code. For example, uh, the, the discretization that I showed you earlier, uh, this helps, this is a prerequisite basically to clearing any CFD interview because you cannot go through OpenForm without understanding each and every aspect of the code. So at the end of it, if you've seen through the code and not just used OpenForm for application, you're bound to clear any CFD interview. There's a very thriving community to help you learn CFD online. I'm sure a lot of you uh, people, a lot of you CFD geeks have already been on it. Um, I've personally been wanting to have something that's a bit more advanced in CFD online. There is something called a Discord server for OpenForm, which I can recommend. I can later link it in the, in the chat box as well, if you guys want to join it. Uh, so basically, people who can ask questions are answered immediately. Um, and of course, if there are new communities that, that come up on Slack or any other portal, I'll let you guys know if, if I find out. Um, the point of this webinar was to introduce and to generate interest in learning advanced C++ for OpenForm. OpenForm has some really advanced C++ in terms of template metaprogramming, uh, polymorphism, and generally in MPI programming as well. So if you want to learn advanced C++, it's a really good outlet. Uh, so you can do a lot of things with it. Object-oriented approach, meaning um, it's obviously there is there's a certain structure, certain ways of initializing each object, certain ways of controlling your memory, and then letting that memory loose. Um, and obviously, the easiest bit is you can just copy a solver, and then you can tweak some things and have your own solver, which makes it really cool. Um, so these are the things that help you learn open form, and this is why you should learn it. In terms of a presentation, this is what I'd like to present. I'd like to show you some things that I do with OpenForm and uh, and basically what the what possibilities exist. So I've I've been doing this for a while, uh, but I've uh, what I used to do before, for example, as I've shown you before, is I used to develop directly with Wim. Wim is a text editor, a text editor for OpenForm. Uh, Vim is a text editor for Linux that you can use, for example, to, uh, to write here. I used to directly write my open form code here and then develop it. Uh, but I've developed a better system for doing it in the past few months. I have been using something called Visual Studio Code. If, if you guys do happen to download a Windows subsystem for Linux or just get a Linux system or even a Windows system, uh, Visual, Subsist uh, Visual Studio Code is one of the text editors that's super light and it is also very suited for things like this. You can debug OpenFoam directly in your text editor and you can do a lot of things. Um, the, the red you see here is because I haven't configured OpenFoam yet for my WSL. I used to work on Linux. I've just shifted to, uh, just shifted to Windows. Uh, so I'm not really set uh, the, the include directories. That's why you see the red underlines. But normally what happens with this is normally this would be a very complicated affair. You'd have a lot of header files. You wouldn't see what is going where. But normally when you do have, do have everything configured, you can actually just navigate to the source file and see, see the contents in it and then actually trace the flow of your code, which makes it really cool. Um, this, this solver, for example, is simpleform.c. Simpleform is basically one of the solvers that uses the simple algorithm, which is for, which is for basically for steady state flow. Uh, it's a steady state solver for incompressible and turbulent flows. If you scroll down, you can basically see everything that you need to know. So what happens basically in a simple loop is they're doing these two, they're including these two, uh, these two files, the u equation dot h and p equation dot h, which are in the same directory. For example, what we, uh, if I'd shown you this before, if I can just, this is basically the solution of the convection diffusion equation. But for a simple uh, algorithm, what you see is basically a similar matrix that's being constructed, a divergence of the velocity matrix, which is the normal 
case for a, for a Navy Stokes situation. And this turbulence basically denotes the, sh- the sheer stress that is part of the right-hand side of a Navy Stokes equation. This is the time derivative that's, that's obtained yet a year from the MRF, that's the moving reference frame class. Uh, so we basically get this. It's a bit complicated, but uh, you get it. Uh, for simple form, for example, you're required to relax the equation. Uh, if you've heard of under relaxation factors, you do that. So there's a flow to the code equation dot relax, and then you actually do the mom- momentum predictor step. For example, in the navier Stokes equation, you do have a pressure gradient that's on the right side. So you see that here. So the solve equation does just what is being done here. It's basically combining the U equation, that is the LHS side of a Navier Stokes equation, with the RHS side of the Navier Stokes equation, which is um, the pressure gradient in this case. That's the U equation. Then you see they have included the P equation dot H. Let's scroll to it. P equation does, dot H does a lot of complicated stuff. We're not going to go into it in this webinar. But but basically, what it does again is is that it corrects it corrects the velocity based on the pressure. That is basically what the simple algorithm is. It calculates the Laplacian of the pressure, which you can see here. And that Laplacian of the pressure is used to correct the pressure. And then that is used to correct the momentum, which is what you see in a momentum corrector. If I can just run the equation here. So this is the solver that's being run. As you can see here, um, they're doing the, they're, for example, running the momentum predictor only once. That is why you don't see iteration equal to one, iteration equal to two. But this is the pressure corrector being run five times. That's because I've said non-orthogonal correction to five. That means it runs this pressure correction step five times. This correction step is run five times. So you see pressure being run five times. GAMG is the pressure solver. You don't have to take my word for it. You can just see it in pressure is GAMG. So this is solving for pressure five times. Um, Smooth solver is doing, uh, smooth solver is basically the solver for velocity. As you can see here, U. It's running it only once because simple does it only once. And of course, for all the turbulence parameters like epsilon and K, it's doing it once as well. So the time step, as we saw, was just one. It's running according to each time step. It's just stepping up. This is actually a steady state flow. Obviously, if you were running something like a piezo form or a pimple form, the time steps would be much, much smaller. And you wouldn't have under relaxation, for example. Here you go. This is the under relaxation factor that was being applied in the step. P dot relax is relaxing the pressure. U dot relax is relaxing the velocity, which are being read from these values, U and P. So this was, again, uh, just a sneak peek into open form. I do not want to go too deep into development. That's why I didn't really uh, extend the talk on this a bit further. And and that's it from my side. If you have questions, please write them to Shruti. Uh, I've finished a bit before time, uh, but of course, that just leaves more time for questions.